In this movie, we're going to have a look at the wonderful appearance panel. If you've never used the appearance panel in Illustrator, you're in for a big treat. So we're going to start off by opening the appearance panel. So it, if you don't have it open already, go to Window Appearance. Shift F6 is the shortcut for that. And it's going to open it up here from my little shortcut panel and it will appear and disappear as I click on this button here. Now I want it to stay forward, so I'm going to drag it above the color panel so that it appears up here. And what we can do is just collapse our color panel for now. We don't need to see that for now. And let's just resize that. OK, so here's our appearance panel. At the moment, it's not doing much. We have a type layer selected and it's telling me I have a type layer and it has opacity settings. So I can go in there and adjust the opacity, which is nice. Give it a blending mode. So maybe choose hard light. Uh, maybe put that up to 90%. So you have opacity options. That's great. But what else can we do in here? Well, there are amazing things we can do in here. At the moment, we have a fill and stroke applied to our text. But did you know I can actually apply multiple fills and strokes in Illustrator? And you can see that this star has multiple strokes applied. If I select that, notice in the appearance panel, that I can see settings for each of those fills and strokes. And I can adjust them here in this panel. So I can go in and make adjustments to my stroke settings, change the color, the size, and all different properties of my stroke. So how did we set that up? Well, let's select the text layer again and let's have a look. So what we're going to do is create a new stroke. And it's created a black stroke. And if you look carefully, let's just zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to go to my navigator, close my graphic styles, and I'm just going to zoom in so that we can see the text a little bit more clearly. And let's just move that selection down on here. So basically it's added a one point stroke on top of my existing stroke. And if I'm to make it bigger, you'll notice it just starts to get bigger. Now I'm going to make it as big as the existing stroke and I'm going to leave it as black at the moment. So the default is it will override whatever stroke you have selected. And notice that even though I've got my text selected, it's overridden the fill property as well. So I could go in here and choose a color. I can click on this little downward facing arrow and choose a color for my fill. And you'll see that it overrides the settings that were down here in the panel. So let's choose that orange color again. I quite like that color, so I'm going to leave that there. Now, if I make the stroke bigger, it starts to encroach over the fill. But watch what happens. I can actually drag my stroke underneath my fill or drag my fill above my stroke. So I can now make my stroke nice and fat without losing the detail of the text. So I can create that effect that you get on cartoons where we have a nice thick back black stroke but the edges of the text are still fully readable. Now I'm going to change the color of the stroke. So I'm going to go in here and choose an orange color. And in fact, let's darken it a little bit. So let's open up our HSB sliders and just say show options and just darken that down a little bit. So we've got a nice dark color and I'm using my navigator as an overview. Now, what if I want to add another stroke instantly? I can go in there and adjust opacity settings for the stroke. So I could have a semi-transparent stroke if I wanted to. Bit weird, but I can do it if I want to. OK, so let's add another stroke. So I click on Add New Stroke button. That adds a new stroke on top of the existing strokes. And let's make it smaller. OK, let's make it about five points and let's choose a bright yellow color. And now that's applied on top of the fill and on top of the stroke. Now I may want it behind the fill, but on top of the stroke, in which case I can just drag it down the layer stack until it's in the right place and make adjustments to the size of it as required. So you can see I can start to build up these quite complex appearances. Now, if I close those up, you'll see I have my multiple strokes and my fill. What about other things that you can apply in the appearance panel? Well, let's just go back to 100% view and let's just move that image down. So what about effects? Well, if we go up to the effect menu and choose warp, and I'm just going to choose an arc warp, 
Notice that it's applied to the stroke that I've just selected. So if I apply a warp, I can apply it selectively to different areas of my text. But I don't want to do that. I want to apply it to all of the text. So if I select the type and now go to Effect Warp, I can go in here and choose a shape and it will now be applied to the entire group of text. So let's choose something like the fish shape. So we're going to adjust this, the scale of that a little bit. So we've got a little bit of a distortion on there. You can also adjust the horizontal and vertical distortion a little bit to get it looking a little bit more three-dimensional. So there we have our fish shaped text. And of course, we could then maybe just make the stroke a little bit wobbly. So I could select the stroke and go up to my effects. And let's go into our stylize section. In fact, no, let's do something more exciting. Go into distort and transform. And what we're going to do is just go into roughen. And I just want to roughen up that path a little bit. So I'm going to click on my preview option. Just bring down the size and bring down the detail a little bit and also put smooth corners. And that just gives us a more kind of random look. Now, if I click on OK, you'll notice that these appearances appear now in the appearance panel. If I open up this stroke, you'll notice the roughen effect is applied to that stroke and I can switch that on or off. I can also decide, actually, I didn't want to apply it there. I want to apply it to this one and I can move it to the background stroke and make changes to the properties just by clicking on the link and making the changes that I want to make. So you'll notice that there's a lot more control over how you can drag and drop appearances within one object. And also I can get access to my warp settings as well at any time. So everything that you do in here is live. The text is still editable. So if, if I want to change it to say Buggles, if that's his name, I can just change it to the G's and all of the appearances will update um, showing me my new text. And you'll see that all the appearances are still applied. Let's just undo that typing and go back to Bubbles, which is actually his real name. And let's have a look at the star up here. Now, what I want to do with this star is I want to add a round corners effect to it and transform it. So the first thing that I'm going to do, let's start with transform. So I'm going to go to Distort and Transform, choose Transform, and again I have a preview button in here. What I want to do is create three copies of my star and offset them horizontally. And what this allows me to do is do exactly that. I've created three copies and once I've reached the extent of my slider, I can then use the arrow keys on the keyboard with Shift held down just to create a little bit of distance between them. Now, of course, I can also adjust the angle, and the scale if I want to create these kind of circular effects where they tail off into the fishbowl. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just leave those on 100. And I'm going to reset the rotate value. And all we're going to do is just use this to create a grid. So I'm going to click on OK. Then what I'm going to do is add another instance of the transform effect. And this time I'm going to use it to offset them vertically. Now it's telling me, do I want to add another instance? I'm going to say, yes, I do. And this time I'm going to offset it again. So three copies. But this time I'm going to offset them vertically. And again, I can just select the text and hit the up arrow key with shift held down to create my grid of stars. So once I've done that, I'm then going to add the stylize effect called round corners. And that's going to be able to round the corners of my star for me and make them a little bit softer. I'm going to bring that value down to about five. Let's just preview that, see if we're happy with it. And I am, so I'm going to click on OK. And you'll notice now that I have two transform effects and I have my round corners effect. Now, you'll notice that the round corners effect is applied before the strokes. I can actually drag that down and apply it after or apply it after the transform effects. And sometimes it will have a knock on effect. So the order in which you apply these effects can be important, but fully editable. Absolutely fantastic. And of course, I can go into my opacity settings and use something like a hard light blending mode to blend that with the background and just bring the opacity down to about 70 percent. 
but let's try overlay. Okay, so a massive amount of flexibility allows you to create fully editable artwork in Illustrator and at any time get back into that artwork to make changes. For example, if I want to scale the star down, all I do is scale one star down and all of them scale down. So a really flexible way of working. We can change our blending modes at any time. So let's choose color or luminosity to get them looking more blue and applied with the background color. So I'm getting a bit carried away, so I'm going to let you leave me and you can go and play with this and see what you can come up with. So that's a little bit about the amazing appearance panel.